Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everybody. This is Mr. Shakespeare here again on the 1st of September 2022. I am here with Liz Cross, who is a psychic comedian and a remote viewer. How are you doing today, Liz? I am doing well, thank you. Okay. Um, this is something uh, that I had mentioned on the Discord. Uh, and I noticed that one of our, one of your members of the Discord has, has um, put something up about it. So the reason I'm doing this so quick is it does actually gel in with one of my theses that I did actually put out. Um, so this is uh, this is TTT, which is titled Transfer Facility. It's a virtual marketplace based in the Netherlands, Holland, where shippers and buyers trade gas supplies. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I've never heard of this. No. Um, it is. It was established in 2003. The TTF gained prominence. I'm reading from here as the energy sector became liberalized and is today considered the reference point to monitor and understand Europe's gas market. So this is where they're setting the price of gas, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, LNG. Now, I will read this bit out before we start. It says, volumes traded on the platform have grown exponentially over the past tw two decades, representing more than 14 times the amount of gas used by Netherlands for domestic purposes. So it is a market maker, a market setter. This is where it's setting the price. Okay. Is that just for Europe or is that the world? Well, um, it. I, I think you could, uh, I think mainly it's for Europe, but we would have to, we would have to benchmark it against, uh, you know, Korea, Taiwan, China, or things like that. I mean, Europe uses a lot of gas, LNG. Um, so we these are these. This is a good benchmark. I mean, at the end of the day, Europe, due to the sanctions that it thought it was imposing upon Russia, but is in fact opposing upon itself, has caused this situation. Um, but what we need to know is why and where did it all start. So um, we're going to go and have a look at here. Okay. So this is the Dutch TTF. This is prices for, so this is a futures chart. Um, mm -hmm. This is the price that they expect to pay for gas uh, in October of this year. Um, so we need to find out what the reference is, which I did look at. So they're, they're pricing this in euros per megawatt hour. Okay. At the end of the day, gas is just energy like oil, like electric. So it's megawatt hour. And for our American listeners out there, I don't think they understand what the hell is going on in Europe, right? It's not being reported very well over here at all. What is going on over there is they're going into winter and they go into winter. Uh, yeah, so the, the, yeah, okay, well, we can they're, do it. Well, they're going into winter. Everybody is extremely worried about the gas and the electricity prices. Uh, they depend on Russia. Russia has essentially, I think, pulled the plug in a lot of areas. A lot of the prices for electricity and gas are going to be so high that people will not be able to afford to heat their homes this winter. 
And if you've ever spent a winter out in parts of Europe, I can promise you it is very unpleasant and very cold. In the UK alone, in London, it doesn't snow often, but that damp cold, because it's always raining, it's dark, you know, it goes dark at three o'clock in the afternoon there, right? Because of where they are, their placement on the world, uh, you know, it, it's cold. Guys, I, I cannot tell you, it is cold. You're having people that are looking at the winter time of not even be able, being able to cook hot food because they are anticipating their electricity and gas prices to go up in upwards of 80%, an 80% increase. So before you think this really isn't important, you have to understand that a lot of times what happens in Europe eventually trickles over our way, okay? So this is why it's very important to monitor this situation. Uh, Mr. Shakespeare, do you have anything to add to that? I do, um, quite a bit, actually, now you've okay. brought it up. Um, so the situation in Europe uh, with gas and, and uh, oil um, so this is as a result of, and this is the big elephant, white elephant in the room, this is a, as a result of the sanctions that were instigated by America, which Europe slavishly follows and are now seeing the effects of those sanctions. America hasn't really felt the effects of the sanctions that it instigated Europe followed blindly, which it didn't have to do, but it did, for whatever reason. And now Europeans will go and see the effects of these sanctions. Okay? The thing you have to understand is the United States of America is pretty much self-sufficient in energy. Pretty much. Now, I understand that, you know, they are using a lot of their strategic oil supplies to keep the price of gas down. Uh, for the American consumer, and that is purely political. That is purely to do with the upcoming midterm election. Otherwise, gas would be $10 a, a gallon. And so they are using a lot of their reserves to keep the price down, okay? But there isn't a lot of natural gas used in the U.S. It's pretty much oil and electric. In Europe, there's a lot of gas used. Because of the sanctions placed upon Russia, and Russian companies and Russian banks, Russia can't accept euros and dollars for their products. And because of the sanctions and the uh, willingness of the European Union partners to go along with what America asked for or demanded, depending on which way you look at it, they have shot themselves in the foot and they now cannot get oil or gas direct from Russia. Now, they are getting some oil and gas to, uh, via Russia, but it's going through third party intermediaries who are just putting the price up because, hey, we live in a capitalist world, apparently. So that's what they're doing. Okay. This is affecting the Europeans way more than it'll ever affect the Americans. So for all the Europeans who are cheering for all the sanctions against Russia, the reason you can't buy Russian oil and Russian gas is because of these sanctions. It does not affect Russia. Russia are selling their oil and gas to the east, to what they call the global south. China and India and everything are galloping, are buying every bit of this stuff, and they're buying it cheaply. Okay? What's the effect going to be? Well, it's going to be very cold. It's going to be very, very cold. But the point of this is uh, we need to look at the gas prices on the futures exchange at the TTF and see what they're doing and why they're doing it. We're going to start with that. Okay, so can you, Liz, get a link with this particular entity, the The TTF? TTF? Yeah. Okay, yes, I have them. So this is the free marketplace. Prices on the Dutch hub are determined apparently by fundamental economic rules of supply and demand. Now, I'm going to make a speculation 
that if less product is coming onto the market because nobody can buy direct from Russia, then the prices will rise. Um, that is just pure market economics. That does not take any genius to work that one out. If you're not allowed to buy from your biggest supplier, Russia has been the source of cheap energy for Europe for many, many years. And for some reason, um, that is now not happening. It's not affecting Russia. It is affecting Europe. So we can look here at the chart just for the since 2022, and we can see that uh, the gas price on the 3rd of January 2022 was 80 euros per megawatt hour, and at its peak, it went to 339. That is a 400% almost increase. So the question I want to ask is, of the TTF, is that organic or has it been manipulated in any way? Is that organic? No, it's pure manipulation. Ah, okay. Right. So that's just uh, helped my theory big time. Okay, so they're jacking up the prices. Why are they jacking up the prices? Why are you jacking up the prices so high? To get people accustomed to paying really, really high prices. They've had it too good for too long. This thing is very, it has an agenda. Even though it's not a physical body, for anybody new to these mind probes, just because it's not living in a body does not mean it does not have a consciousness, if that makes sense at all. I think I screwed that up. Anyway, um, so I'm probing the consciousness of this overall company, TTF. Now, um, it is very, it's, it's overinflated. It's being manipulated heavily. Okay. Uh, so are they using the fact that the sanctions on Russia, are they using that as the excuse to jack these prices so high? Are you using the sanctions on Russia as an excuse to raise the prices so high? Exactly. Bingo. Okay. Now. I don't suppose it cares about the effects of this, but the effects of this are that many people are going to go very cold this winter in the European Union. Um, and this is not really, this is more a reflective or almost a statement, not really a question, because if this is being manipulated and if these prices are being kept artificially high to get people to pay more for their energy, um, that's going to affect everybody in Europe. It doesn't why? matter. Why do they want to overinflate? That's what I don't understand. Like, why would you do that? What is the benefit of manipulating and artificially overinflating these prices to, for people that already struggle? Listen, I know that I see, you know, American debates and everything on the on the Facebook and what have you, down with the country, down with the hell of the Like, I get that. But I don't think that a lot of people understand how borderline poverty people are living in Europe. The wages are low. Even if you look at the UK alone, you're talking about a nurse who is a newly qualified nurse, they're paid peanuts in the UK, right? A newly qualified nurse here is starting out at probably 40, 50, 60 grand a year, right? A newly qualified nurse in the UK is, you're lucky if you make 20,000 pounds in a city like London, which is comparable to LA or Manhattan. You have to wrap your head around how everybody is living on the breadline already. So I don't understand what the benefit is for these companies to do this to poor people. 
Well, there's one of the stated aims of some of these people is to reduce the world's population, isn't it? Oh, are you talking about our friend Klaus? <laughs> well, he's no friend of mine. But Well, no, of course not. But I know, and I know you're doing that in with sarcastic and parentheses and everything else, but there is an agenda going on to depopulate, isn't there? But do you no. think they're trying to depopulate? Well, let's ask, let's ask. Why on earth would you inflate these prices so high that you know that they are out of reach for most regular working people? This is an environmental issue. Well, it may well be an environmental issue, but people will die as a result of not being able to heat their homes in the European Union, in England, and in other places this winter. Okay. Now, I know that they're going to say Putin's fault, Putin's fault, Putin's fault, because that is the cover story. That is the cover story for everything. But it's not Putin's fault. The U.S. put the sanctions on. The Europeans blindly followed the U.S. And now the sanctions, which always hurt the people who put the sanctions on more than the sanction. E. Don't you think Russia have been planning for this for a long time? Oh, yeah, they, we didn't know that. They knew sanctions were coming since 2014. You know, it maybe affected them for a month or two at worst, at, at, at best. Okay. They've been waiting for this to happen. They knew they were going to get sanctioned. So they've done everything about it to protect themselves. Meanwhile, the hapless Europeans, led by Ursula von Stupid and other people like that, <laughs> are just going down this route. They are doing this to themselves. This is the wake-up call. This is what people should be realising. It's no good, Boris Johnson or people like that, saying Putin's done this to us. No, he hasn't. It was the sanctions that the European Union, at the behest of the Americans, said, yes, we'll go along. We'll try and stop. You know, The point of the sanctions was to try and break Russia. Well, how's that going? We did a we did a reading the other day. The ruble came out almost as strong as the dollar. You know, it's not going to work. You know, and so people will. This will maybe this maybe there are massive profiteering off the back of this, and maybe the gas companies and you know will get the higher prices and everything else. I don't know. There's 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 always got to be some benefit for people. Why would they go along with this? Well, you're going to earn more money. Okay, fine, we'll go along with it. You know, but it's the guys in the street. The so what that... do we do? What do we do? I mean, I know for a fact, because we are in constant communication in our house, right? For those of you new, you know, I'm actually British and my family are all British. We are constantly on the phone back and forth every day to the UK, friends and family. There's no firewood. That was the last thing that we heard. And that was yesterday where our family members are now um, that live outside of London are scrambling to buy firewood and there's no firewood. Everybody sold out of firewood. So if you don't have a garden with a tree in it that you can chop down and, you know, and get ready for the winter, there's no firewood. How are you going to heat your home? It's a very good question. Um, I know there's a movement in the UK that's gaining traction about don't pay your bills. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that doesn't help you with firewood. I mean, that just helps you with, you know, regular utilities. But uh, and I don't that, know. I mean, that, we sorry, have... We sorry, have, let me just add in this. So that's where... When we did that probe yesterday, and that video is not out yet, but it will be, and that will be exclusive to our Patreon uh, subscribers. Um, we have a set of videos that we release every month uh, just for our subscribers. They have a access to exclusive information. Now, that is where I saw, if you remember yesterday or the day before, uh, we saw that uh, we got the answer 
that there would be uh, regulations put on these energy companies that under no circumstances will they be allowed to cut off anybody's electricity or gas, right? You remember when we got that answer? Yeah. So that is why if it's that movement that's going on in the UK where we're just not going to pay the bills, that'll be why. They, they're not just not going to pay the bills. It's that they can't afford to pay the bills. Well, I understand that, but it, I understand they're going to do it out of necessity. Um, because if you have no money, you literally can't pay. Okay. But now we know there's definitely an agenda being set at the spot market with the gas price that they're jacking it up um, for their own reasons. The consequence of that is that people will uh, not be able to heat their homes. The political fallout for this will be huge. Um, I understand that Germans now in Germany, they're already preparing, you know, they're getting extra police ready to, you know, fight their own population because the populace will rise up against things like this when they're hungry, when they're cold. That's exactly what they will fight, you know, rise up against. Um, I saw one of the, I saw a, I think it was the Estonian, is it the Estonian prime minister? No, it might not be. There was a, there was a prime minister that basically said, look, uh, no, it was one of the German ministers and said, look, we'll have to keep supporting Ukraine even if we all freeze or something like that. You know, that narrative is over. People are not going to buy that, nor should they. At the end of the day, you know, they've, they've got to realise that, you know, the political leadership in, this, in, in pretty much every country is co-opted to the point of, you know, happily waking up every morning and thinking how they can shoot their own population in the feet. You know, how can... <laughs> I mean, it's, it's madness. There is no other explanation for it, you know. There are a few countries, there's uh, Serbia and Hungary, which are not going to be doing that. They're not going to be following. They're going to buy their oil and gas from, uh, from Russia. And so they're going to be okay, in my opinion. They're going to go against the wishes of the EU. They're going to put their country first. I think we did, a, if we did remember, a probe. On, we did a probe on Liz Trust, if you remember yesterday. Yeah, it wasn't and, just about Liz Trust; it was an expanded thing. And she has no clue and doesn't know what to do and can't control the problem. Of course, she can't. You know. But that—that's the problem across Europe in general. Is this weak leadership? Of course. It's just been so watered down, the leadership quality. By design, by design. Yeah, Go and look yeah. at the World Economic Forum, the young globalist leaders, and look who was there and look who are running in positions of power now. They were put there. I mean, the, one of the most telling things that came out of that uh, trust video yesterday, I think it was, was it yesterday or the day before, whenever it was, no, yeah. And it was, you know, we, we worked out that Liz Truss was no Margaret Thatcher and we actually asked Liz Truss what would Margaret Thatcher do. And it was to do with the immigration, actually, and she just say, stop it. You know, Truss is saying all the reasons why she can't stop it, you know. And, and we asked her what would Liz, uh, Margaret Thatcher do and she said she would stop it. And it's exactly the same. If we asked what Margaret Thatcher would do about these energy situations, she would stop it, you know. She would understand that, you know, you have to buy energy and oil from the people who have got it. And Russia has it in spades. It's one of the reasons why they want to break Russia up and take them over and steal all their resources. I mean, that's the plan for Russia. But Russia has, you know, a lot of energy in the ground, whether it's of the oil type or the natural gas type or whatever. They have it and we need it. Yeah, well, there you go. I mean, it's just a, a big mess, and it looks like a bleak winter. It really does. I, I feel for our European friends. I, I really do. They know it. That's why they're making these suggestions on the Discord. Can you look at this? Can you look at that? Now, as we are looking at that TTF, um, I actually could see that number rising up to well over uh, six, 700 euros. Wow. Really? Yes. Okay. So we've seen nothing yet. 
And so the problem is that this will not go back down. You know, it's kind of like you get used to paying $5. I'm just speaking hypothetically here. You get used to paying $5 for a loaf of bread, right? You, you adjust to that style of living. The bread doesn't go back down. It may when it's going stale and they put it on sale, uh, on sale, but it, it's not going to go back down. And, and this is what I think is, is going to come. Now, what I'm getting from TTF, the ultimate goal, which is, you know, a global goal is that they will then be forced to find alternative sources of energy. And we will end up having to dump how we resource uh, electricity and gas. Okay. Well, electricity is easy. We can create, uh, which is what the Russians have been doing for a long time. They've been creating nuclear power stations running on their thorium-based reactors, which are pretty much as safe as you can get, and they get energy for next to nothing. Right. So if we see, let's ask, will we see a, a firing up of the old uh, nuclear? I feel like they're, they're going to have be forced to go and restart some of these nuclear plants at some point just to save themselves. And I'm speaking of Europe. Therefore, pay attention to the uranium stock prices. What about, can we just um, get this TTF exchange? Can we take it out in the future of it? Yeah. How far do you want to go? Uh, I'm going to do various points. I'd like to do 30th of November, please, first. Okay. So November 30th, November 30th, 2022, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay. Um, we're looking at the price in euros of... Uh, a megawatt hour uh, currently it's at 220 uh, sorry 251 what no is it something like that yeah uh, yeah it's around uh, no, 230 240 250 um what what is the price out what is it looking like in november end of november it's higher it's much higher <laughs> okay um can we go to january the 30th 2023 2023, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay. Is it higher than the end of November? Is it higher than it was in the at the end of November? And that's per megawatt hour. Yes, much higher. Okay. The, let's go to the end of March 2023. March 31st, March 31st, 2023. 8 p.m. Eastern Eastern Daylight Time. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is it higher than the end of January? Is it higher or lower than the end of January? It's lower. Okay. All right. Well, that's because it's a futures contract market, and of course now they're pricing for the spring, where of course the price should go down because there's going to be less usage. Um, when was peak price? Don't have to care what the price was. When was peak price compared to the 1st of September? Was it in October? No. Was it in November? No. December? No. January? No. February? I feel like uh, February, January, February time. Okay. Which, of course, is right slap bang in the middle of winter. Right, that's when people need the uh, electricity to heat their homes the most. This is gas, but yeah. I mean okay. gas, sorry. Yeah, okay. Well, there you have it. It's not going to go any lower. It's just going to get higher and higher. The cost of gas is going to go higher and higher and higher, peaking some point in January, February, which peaks with the height of the winter. And then by March, it starts tailing off because by March, in some places, it starts to... You know, that's the start of spring at some point. Um, generally, it could get a bit warmer and we'd use less gas. So we're working as a normal market would work, but on a multiplication not seen before in history. So in other words, we're starting from a very high price. It's going to get extremely high and then mega high. Yep. 
Yep, unfortunately. Uh, well, thank you for that. That was very informative. And that was for our European subscribers that are extremely interested in how this is going to go. Uh, our Americans, please bear with us. We were very sympathetic over the Ukrainian war until our gas prices went up and then we weren't so sympathetic <laughs> after that. However, Europe is being hammered with inflation and this gas and oil crisis that is coming their way for the wintertime, it's not looking good. It's, it really isn't. People are, are scrambling just to make ends meet now and it's not even cold yet. So thank you, Mr. Shakespeare. Thank you to whoever suggested this for a probe. We really appreciate it. If you'd like to make any suggestions, don't forget you can do that by joining the Patreon at Remote Viewing and Beyond. Make sure you access the Discord. You create your Discord profile and you attach it to your Patreon membership. Then you have Discord access. You can interact with Mr. Shakespeare directly on Discord and make suggestions there. If you want to book a reading with me, go to psychiclizcross.com. Thank you very much.